Hi everybody, uh, and welcome to the McLuhan Institute, TMI Live number 22, Blast and Counterblast, Lewis and McLuhan, Wyndham Lewis and Marshall McLuhan, Percy, Wyndham Lewis and Marshall McLuhan. Um, I'm back here in the scriptorium, uh, the library of Eric McLuhan, where every Tuesday night I come and work on cataloging his library of 6,000 or so books. Um, and because I was uh, talking earlier about Wyndham Lewis, I decided, okay, well, I guess we'll talk about, about him and Marshall McLuhan a bit tonight. Um, and Eric McLuhan overlaps a little bit too, um, which is good. Um, there's so much to say about the relationship between Wyndham Lewis and Marshall McLuhan. Um, and there are better voices than mine to say it, but uh, better and more educated. Um, but I can talk about a few things from my own personal experience, um, and that's what I shall do. Um, so this actually goes back to uh, when I did uh, the library of Marsha McLuhan. Um, and at that time, uh, I kept a blog called Inscriptorium. Uh, it's still up, inscriptorium.wordpress.com, um, where, uh, sort of like what I'm doing now, uh, when I came across interesting things, I made a note of them on this blog. Um, January 12th, 2011, I created a post called Mechanisms for Shaping Sensibility. Um, and I'll, I won't read the whole post because time tends to fly here, but I'll let you uh, visit Inscriptorium for that if you like. Mechanisms for Shaping Sensibility. If you search Inscriptorium and Andrew McLuhan, you'll find it. January 10th, 2011. Um, and at that time, I'd come across a book of Wyndham Lewis, One Way Song. And I'd come across um, this, which is a magazine called Arts Canada. Uh, from November 1967, issue 114. Um, this one is uh, still sealed. I opened it up. Um, and in the back there, it's got uh, a flexi disc, um, a flexible record, which is pretty amazing. Uh, and uh, what it is, is on one side, it's Wyndham Lewis reading uh, from his book, One Way Song, uh, and on the other side, it's Marshall talking about Wyndham Lewis, which is um, pretty amazing. Um, Marshall says, uh, in St. Louis, I came down to visit and do some paintings. Oh, wait, no. Yeah. In St. Louis, Lewis came down to visit and to do some paintings. Um, Marshall had arranged several portrait commissions for Lewis in St. Louis, where Marshall was teaching at uh, St. Louis University. Uh, <clears throat> and he continues, and I managed to persuade him to read something from One Way Song for our little home recorder. And it was most interesting to observe Lewis upon hearing his own voice. He simply roared with laughter. In all the years preceding, it had never occurred to him that he had essentially an English voice. Uh, anyway, it goes on and, and you can read that. Um, I thought I would play... Uh, uh, so what I did is what, I put this flexi disc on our uh, dad's turntable there and recorded it, uh, and I'll play a little bit here. For him, I, that, that's what I got it. It was Lewis who put me onto all this study of the environment as uh, as an educational, as a teaching machine. And he says that's where I got it. It was Lewis who put me onto this study of an environment as an educational teaching machine. It's uh, Marshall talking there, um, which is really neat. And uh, in fact, here's a, a book from Eric's library, America and Cosmic Man by Wyndham Lewis. And um, the Wyndham Lewis section is back there in the last row. Um, so it's going to be a while before I get there. So I pulled this anyway for your interest. In the back here, there's a note, 21 Global Village. And if you turn to page 21, at the top here, Dad has underlined, And since plural sovereignty anyway, now that the earth has become one big village, with telephones laid 
on from one end to the other, and air transport, both speedy and safe, must be a little farcical. The plurality implied in that title could be removed as a good example to the rest of the world and the USA become the America American Union. Um, now that the earth has become one big village, a global village. Um, so that's neat. Um, Marshall was never shy to admit a debt when he owed it. Um, as he said in that recording, uh, he got a lot from Wyndham Lewis. Uh, the study is of the uh, environment as a programmable teaching machine. Uh, so yeah, I would encourage you to visit inscriptorium.wordpress.com and check out the post, Mechanisms for Shaping Sensibility from January 12, 2011. If you want to um, hear the recording on the FlexiDisc, I have both sides recorded there, and I talk a bit about uh, about this issue of Arts Canada, which includes um, The Great War, Wyndham Lewis and the Underground Press by Sheila Watson, um, which is pretty great. Wyndham Lewis uh, put out um, a publication, I think this is from 1914, it is, and it was reprinted. This is the reprint from 1991. Uh, no, later than that. Uh, 2000 something, 2010. Um, and it's a it's a reprint of Blast, um, which is really cool. Uh, it's it was a very avant-garde manifesto. Uh, huge type. Uh, Hey Dave, wow, hello Japan, that's pretty fun. Um, Blast is uh, was very avant-garde, it's iconic now, um, and it's uh, Blast and Bless, it says, Blast first from politeness, England, curse its climate for its sins and infections, dismal symbol set round our, bed our bodies of effeminate lout within. Victorian vampire, the London cloud sucks the town's heart. Um, it's a, it's a really neat uh, thing. Blast, if you can get a copy. Uh, that's 19, uh, 19, 1954. Marshall McLuhan responds with counter blast. Um, this is a little treasure here. You see Marshall has written his name under it. Uh, the two side by side are pretty cool. And the two covers. Um, from what I've been told, Counterblast, with its blue wraps and its saddle stitch, the staples, three staples, this was uh, done on machines at the Center for Culture and Technology by um, uh, Ted Carpenter, Edmund Carpenter, who was a colleague of Marshall's, uh, close colleague. They did the Explorations Journal together. Uh, and were lifelong friends uh, right up till the end, really. Um, this is Counterblast 1954. In 1914, a few weeks before the war, Wyndham Lewis, the painter, put out Blast. I'm oh, sorry, 14, not 1919. He set out to create a new vortex of thought and feeling consistent with the changed conditions of life, work, and society. He was too late. The imbalance of thought and feeling in the new technological world of England and Europe was extreme. The explosion of 1914 did not do the work of Blast. Blast was full of energy, hope, and new vision. Those who crept back from the battlefields had none of these. The work of reorientation of technological man was left to America in the 20s. America was not ready. America botched it. Uh, and it, uh, it goes on, and Marshall then follows the style of Blast with Blast England, ancient ghost of culture poaching the eyes of the Canadian hamlets, uh, etc. Blast, Blast, and then he gets to Bless. Bless the Massey Report, huge red herring for derailing Canadian culture while it is absorbed by American art and technology. Uh, Massey Harris Farm Machinery, blast, bless, blast, bless. Anyway, it's a, a really neat thing. It also includes a couple pieces of Marshalls at the end here. Media Log, 
and five sovereign fingers taxed the breadth, the breath. Um, cool artifacts. Uh, another point of uh, Marshall and Lewis coming together, and which I got in a little bit of trouble for earlier, is this uh, a portrait of Marshall McLuhan by Wyndham Lewis from uh, 1944. Uh, very simple. I actually love this. This is one of my favorite things, this portrait. Uh, this is a print of it. Um, and I had offered uh, to give a copy away but I was um, quickly notified by the owner of the portrait that uh, I can't just give prints away of it so sorry about that and I won't do that. Um, I was trying to give an incentive for people to join the Patreon page which supports this work uh, and that's patreon.com slash McLuhan um, and I uh, since I did the plea earlier I had a couple people sign up which is great and thank you and even one person up their donation from one dollar to five dollars a month which is great and more than covers the cost of the stamp for the mail outs that I do um, and I'm actually I'm gonna do something else because um, I don't believe in paywalls uh, a lot of the point of me doing the McLuhan Institute is to make everything available for anybody who's interested and wants to research and can do the work um, and I don't believe in paywalls preventing people and giving other people priority however uh, I do appreciate that people give uh, money to help me do it so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make your patreon donation your discount so um, if you're giving, say, $10 a month on the Patreon and you want to buy something from the bookshop, I'm going to give you a 10% discount up to 50%. So if you're giving $50 a month, bless you, not blast you, and I'll give you a 50% discount on anything from the bookshop. Um, and if you're giving more than that a month and one or two people are, and I love you for it, um, I'll, so it'll be up to 50%. And hopefully that's um, something nice for me to you. Um, and what I am, uh, what I did do, instead of giving this portrait away, I'm going to give away a copy of McLuhan Studies Volume 1, which features on the cover Wyndham Lewis's 1944 portrait of Marshall McLuhan, um, which I guess would have do been done in St. Louis. Um, and this uh, journal, uh, which was started and edited by my father, Eric McLuhan, here's the tie-in features um, articles by Marshall and Eric and Marshall and Eric together, as well as William Coons, um, Derek de Kirchhoff, lots of other people, including uh, Joe Galbo, McLuhan and Baudrillard, Notes on the Discarnate Simulations and Tetrads, uh, Frank Singroni's Proposed Fifth Law of Media, uh, postmodernity, CD-ROMs and information overload, all kinds of interesting stuff. Wayne Constantino, sorry, Wayne Constantino's Power of Posture. Uh, I think that would be the first iteration of what would become uh, the human equation that uh, he and dad wrote. Um, and at the end, it's uh, the center reading list, Marshall McLuhan's reading list for the Center for Culture and Technology. Um, a really cool artifact and we sell them at the shop so um, what I'm going to do is um, every every month I'm going to draw a name of random of all the people on the patreon if you're giving a dollar a month or whatever uh, and I'm going to pick an item from the shop and whoever's name I draw will get them so if you sign up on patreon please include your shipping address or I won't be able to send you things like that and the little newsletter I'm starting up um, another cool artifact from here, we're almost out of time, is uh, this is one of my prized possessions. And this is Marsha McLuhan's luxurious silk smoking jacket, uh, which uh, he is wearing in this portrait by Wyndham Lewis. Uh, and this is a treasure, <laughs> obviously, uh, from, I guess, the 30s or 40s. It doesn't have a label in it, but I would presume it's of American manufacture. Maybe he got it in Europe. Probably not. Uh, it's a very grand thing. Um, and part of, we have all kinds of stuff around here that will eventually form uh, a museum 
uh, exhibit for the McLuhan Institute. Um, you know, I have Marshall's academic robes, his smoking jacket, his rowing jacket from Cambridge, his rowing oar, all these cool artifacts, which, um, you know, are handy little talking points to uh, teach people about who Marshall was and what he did and his life and everything. So um, I'm glad we were able to hold on to them so far. Uh, what else did I have here? Oh, this is um, a curious thing. I don't know why, but we have three copies. If you're looking at the um, TMI Live from a few weeks ago when I talked about Finnegan's Wake and we looked at um, a three-volume copy of James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake um, that was specially bound and interleaved, um, for some reason, Marshall had... Uh, America, I presume, by Wyndham Lewis, done in the same way. Um, and it's not an amazing copy. It looks like a facsimile, but it's interleaved. And um, I have three copies of it here for some reason with these funky blue covers. Don't know what that's about. Um, today in the inventory, I am on to Winston Churchill, starting with Blood, Sweat and Tears. Uh, and I just got in the office, so I haven't even looked at this. Oh, look, Howard Wetzel. That's my godfather. Hey, Howard. Um, so I'm going to get down to work. Uh, just a reminder, if you want to listen to that flexi disc with uh, Wyndham Lewis reading his poetry and Marshall talking about his relationship with Wyndham Lewis, go to inscriptorium.wordpress.com or search Inscriptorium and Andrew McLuhan, and the title is Mechanisms for Shaping Sensibility from January 12th, 2011. Thanks for being here. I love you guys. You're the best, uh, and have a good night. Uh, we'll see you next week.